Hey everyone, with both Brexit and Christmas only a couple of weeks away, I thought I'd look at how the 12 days of Christmas are coming along this year. First of all, 12 drummers drumming. There's an old joke about two cowboys riding through the canyon and they hear the ominous sound of drums in the distance and one of them says, you know, I don't like the sound of those drums, and a distant voice yells out, he's not a regular drummer. But anyway, most of the drummers I saw in the past year or two were the people's referendum types making a noise outside of Parliament, and they've all ironically had to beat it. And now they have their little Marxist get-togethers online rather than outside a branch of Itsu. What with all the quarantining though, we have to be especially careful of drummers though, because in the spring there's a real concern that they could emerge thinking that they've learned to play guitar and sing. Eleven Piper's piping. You know, I've got a friend who is hearing bagpipes in his head. He was later diagnosed with schizophrenia. Anyway, Piper's, eleven of them, and presumably round at Nicola Sturgeon's house, which seems like it might be in contradiction to the SNP's laws against family gatherings, but hey, do as I say, not as I do. Besides, if you want a smaller act like the Proclaimers, it will cost you a few quid, or Scottish pounds, or possibly euros. It really depends on the time of day the interviewer asks, really. Ten Lords are leaping. You know, I really wish they were, but most of them will probably still likely be showing up at the House of Lords for their daily £300 attendance fee, and they're more likely to be leaping to submit an expense receipt than out of a window. These are the likes of Lord Hesseltine and Neil Kinnock, Philip Hammond and Ken Clark. They're all too important to risk having to face the public or show accountability these days. Luckily not John Berko though, because he was denied a peerage. Serves him right. Yeah, I once read that he attended a Pride Festival, though presumably because he thought it would also attract supporters of greed, gluttony, lust, sloth, envy and wrath. Nine ladies dancing. Got to be honest here, with the addition of the dancers, we're up to 42 people here. It makes you wonder whether the person giving these gifts is somehow involved in human trafficking. Do the dancing girls speak with an East European accent? Are they just there for dancing? You know, what's the next one of these, I wonder? Let's see. And it's eight maids of milking. I'm sure they were, but apparently Prince Andrew was at a Pizza Express that evening, so he knew nothing about it. Tell you what, though, someone once threw a pint of milk, and I thought, how dairy. Seven swans are swimming. You're pretty sure you have to be royal to eat or trade in swans. I'm not sure of where you buy swans for Christmas these days. Was that something that was ever regulated by Brussels or not? We'll never know. I do know that the Queen doesn't actually eat them even at Christmas. Apparently she has turkey, although swans do have white feathers on top of a black skin, so I'm frankly astonished that Meghan Markle hasn't tried to appropriate them to push some kind of racial agenda. But then I guess that would involve reading and some research on her behalf, which is unlikely to happen anytime soon. As for myself, I'm currently reading a book about shipbuilding. It's riveting. Get it? Earlier in the summer, I read a book about an immortal dog and it was impossible to put down. Anyway, six geese are laying. I always found this was a sensible number of geese to have laying because the half dozen eggs would fit perfectly into an egg carton. Although a number of years ago, I remember there was a story during the rounds that Brussels was trying to regulate the number of eggs in a carton, presumably to make it a metric number like ten rather than a dozen, or force eggs to be sold by the gram rather than the egg. The last time I actually saw a goose, so that was down at the golf course, I remember I shot a birdie in the seventh hole, largely because the swan in question kept honking at me while I was trying to line up my putt. And we're on to the five gold rings, and the price of gold, it's up over 20% this year. Well, the FTSE 100 is down over a thousand points, and personally speaking, I'd probably just sell the gold right now and buy it at the bottom of the market. I'm not a broker, of course, though, nor would I expect to get rich by listening to a broker, given that their job title is a verb meaning to make you go bankrupt. Anyway, the four calling birds. I do know where to buy the calling birds, though, when they're going cheap. But anyway, on to more birds and it's three French hens. And according to The Guardian and the BBC, they're going to be staying in France, maybe sat on top of a phone mast trying to make a long-distance call. The food stories during the rounds about Brexit have been frankly ludicrous, more than I even imagined they'd be, suggesting that the French and Dutch farmers would choose to destroy their animals and crops rather than sell them on the open market to Britain. The part of the French story that seemingly hasn't been mentioned as much is the fact that France is currently lining up to sign billions of pounds worth of energy contracts. The sizable nuclear contract alone is worth about £20 billion, and that's forgetting what happens if the UK or France decide to bring in a tax on their airspace. But sure, French cheese might go up in price, so let's focus on that. It's not as if anywhere in England makes cheese. Oh, wait, no, they do. Anyway, two turtle doves. Did you hear the one about the Marxist dove that lived in a coop? A coup? Ah, never mind, that joke worked better when I scribble it down in paper. Quickly moving on to the partridge in a pear tree, and that's an expression that now makes me largely think of Alan Partridge. Personally speaking, if I'm getting a pear tree, I'd rather have had a bottle of brandy on it, like those pears in the bottle thing that they make in Alsace-Lorraine, yet another product that will presumably be impossible to buy after Brexit. Unless by impossible you mean readily available on the internet and in the shops. So let's close with a classic joke. Two men die and they find themselves standing at the pearly gates. Both of you are very good men, says St. Peter, but heaven is getting crowded and I can only allow one of you to come in. What can you do? And the first a farmer plants a pear tree and it grows huge delicious fruits. Wonderful, says St. Peter. Then he turns to the second, who's a king, and he says, what can you do, your majesty? And the king decides to visit the toilet. And ultimately, St. Peter makes the decision to allow the king into heaven. And the moral of that story is that a royal flush always wins against a pear, no matter how big. Anyway, see you next week or possibly in the new year. See how it goes. If not, Merry Christmas. And if you like this, please click subscribe.